State University. Welcome to the show, everybody. How are you? <laughs> so I have to be very honest here that this is much better than the other time we recorded the live podcast. I think it was episode six. Andy and I recorded at a Gordon Beers in front of three guys who were so drunk they had no idea what we were doing. Uh, so you're a much better, much less inebriated crowd. So thank you very much. So welcome to the podcast. My name is Mark Fisher. Uh, really glad that you could join us here today at B Sides Atlanta. I hope you did, you have enjoyed it as much as we have. Um, Andy Willingham, you'll notice he's not here. Uh, unfortunately, you know Andy was planning to be here. Unfortunately, a family um, circumstance occurred, and family commitments beat podcasting uh, for all of us every day of the week. So uh, Andy said this is regrets. So uh, Steve, how are things? Things are good. This is my first time at B-Sides Atlanta. It's been a hell of a show. I'm actually really, really happy to be here because you guys are awesome. Just really awesome. So I'm having a ball right now. This is great. And also joins us the ever lovely Yvette Johnson, who has left her secure, undisclosed this location inside the perimeter to enter out, venture out into the hinterlands of Cobb County. Yvette, how are you? I am well. Uh, my passport is stamped, but I have to get back inside the printer before midnight, so. Yeah. And last but certainly not least, Joseph Sparkles. So call me Joseph, my friend. How are you? I'm doing good. And I, I want to, to, to break something wide open here. So you notice there's no Andy Willingham. And that's exactly it. There is no Andy Willingham. Wait, See, wait, I've never wait, met wait, no, there no, 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 stop it. We're no, tired I've, of never, no. I've never met Andy. Right? I've never met Andy in the eight years I've been on the podcast. And here it is, right? Here's his name. Andy Willingham, right? I'm holding up props. Okay? We gotta look at this. We gotta break this down a little bit. First, Andy starts with A. A? A. A what? A what? Well, we look at his last name. His last name. Willingham. Willingham. Oh, Lord. W H. W H. What could that possibly be but Waffle House? Andy Willingham is a Waffle House employee. <laughs> This has been a long con, years in the making, I'm telling you. <laughs> so this has been a conspiracy theory this kid's had for almost a year, maybe even longer now, and we're trying to convince him it's not real. Unfortunately, <clears throat> the one chance we get to present physical evidence, it didn't happen, so we're just gonna let him run with that for now. Yeah. But I promise you, Andy is real. He tried to kill me in Spain once. There's a story about that, we'll get to it later. But it's not just a figment of his imagination. Although, if you follow John Oliver, the Olsen twins, it's one person who just wrote really fast. That's that, that is true. Right, so getting back on track. So what we're here to talk about uh, tonight is really sort of a little bit of the backstory around the Southern Prosecutor podcast. But most importantly, my, I'm willing to bet if you're, if you're one of the people who hung out at the end of a con to hear this, you might want to do a podcast. So we want to just kind of peel back some of the, the glamour and glitz that we know we exude tremendously. And actually tell you what it's really like to do a podcast. I know, glamour and glitz. So your words, how about it? <laughs> so uh, one thing, please remember there is fair use in the United States copyright laws. Cease and desist letters are real. You don't want to get them. So one of the things that we wanted to do is we back in, in 2009, 2010, Andy and I, uh, Andy was working in Atlanta at the time, and we were grousing about how there were some good podcasts out there. There were some not so good podcasts out there, but we would we would sit and just gripe and just be upset about what was going on in information security at the time. Uh, problems we completely solved, like awareness education, encryption, we just solved all those things. And, and so there's new things to talk about. Things like the Net NetSec podcast, which was Mark McKay and Rich Vogel and Zach Lane, uh we really enjoyed listening to them. You know, Paul.com before it became Paul Security Weekly. Paul was really technical. 
but for reasons we'll talk about it, couldn't really listen to them in my normal drive time because my kids would be in the car. My kids were little back then, and Paul. Um, Security Justice was a fantastic podcast. They recorded live at a bar. Uh, it was wonderful. And then Security Now. So we had no idea what we were getting into, but we had something to say, and we needed to get the podcast off the ground. Um, we felt, let me back up one, plagiarism is the highest form of compliment, is it not? It is not uh, a coincidence Steve, that the first 60 episodes of, the, of our podcast sound a lot like the network security podcast used to sound. <clears throat> yeah, that was kind of intentional. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was where are you going to go, what are you going to do, but you know, um, that's, that's where it came from. But fortunately, Rich and uh, Mark McKay were extremely gracious. Uh, as we came on board, and they actually they they became big podcast fans. Yep. So you have to find inspiration in what other people do. Simply copying other podcasts for us, there was no creativity there. And, and actually, we do like being creative. We actually like having a lot of fun doing this. Yeah. So if you're out there and you're interested in doing a podcast, look at the podcasts that are running. Ones that are infosec and ones that aren't. And we'll talk a little bit more about non-infosec podcasts in a minute. But find that inspiration, have something to say, and put your own bent on it. Make it part of you. The way you hear us, how many of y'all listen to the podcast? Thank you. Wow. Um, what, 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 <laughs> what you actually hear on the podcast is who we are, us. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, it just, it's, it's fun. It's, and we've made how, many, how much money doing it? Zero. Yeah. Zero. Zero. Yeah. And, and here's the funny thing, uh, just a behind the scenes tip. When you hear the final product, the recorded product, you're actually <laughs> hearing us recorded live. We don't do second takes unless I screw up. And by screw up, uh, we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But you hear us as we are. So, like, sometimes the fighting and the bickering and things, it's real. But it's not because we're, we're mad at each other. We're just very opinionated. And this is a good thing. So when Merton says, put your own bent on it, that's what it is. Be yourself. Everybody will like you better because of it. So the other thing also is you need to, if you're going to do this, you, want to, you need to put the content out because people want to hear it. Joseph has got a very interesting observation. Yeah, over the past, I guess, year or so, we've actually released fewer and fewer episodes. People notice that. Um, but uh, our listener numbers have gone up with fewer episodes, which... I would probably say is due to the fact that there are just more security people out there these days than when we started recording eight years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would love to think it's our scintillating voices, but <laughs> all right. So the next step is you've got you to get a team together, right? And there's a bunch of different roles that have to happen on a podcast. And this is stuff that if you, if you haven't done recording before, you don't necessarily think about it. Um, when you're doing, when you're, the first most important role, I think, is the producer, right? Um, and this is the person that does the recording, the editing, and the posting. And that's, for, for the longest time, it's been predominantly Joseph. Um, it's, uh, no, this is not a lie. Um, the first 10 episodes each lasted between 45 and 60 minutes. Um, each one took me four to six hours to edit down because I was just that awful at it. <laughs> okay. um, but over time, I got better. I learned the, the tool a lot better. So now when we record a 30-minute show, uh, I, it's normally uploaded and being downloaded uh, 10 to 15 minutes after we break the Skype connection. That's how fast we're able to do it now. Depending Again, on who's actually doing the producing. Right. Thing, so. He's a little more <laughs> nitpicky about that. I, hey, unless, you know, unless somebody dropped an F-bomb. Um, and, and he's taking show notes. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, well, the show notes thing, though, we've even gotten better at that because we started using Google Docs. So, in fact, see, if we were doing, like, the, the, the Skype thing right now, what we're reading off of here, these are our show notes. And so we would take the condensed version of that, pop that into the blog, ta-da, there you go. We've made a science out of this stuff. So one of the important things you need to know is if you're a brand new podcaster, and um, this, this, is, this is the, if you're the producer and you get some of these comments, uh, they hurt but then you man up and move on. Um, the, the thing that you're seeing on the right here, the one comment, uh, I absolutely love the podcast, that is an actual comment that was sent to us via the, the podcast website. 
Um, and for those who uh, might be listening to this later, because we are going to release this out onto the podcast stream, I want to read this comment real quick. <laughs> I absolutely love your podcast. It's very professional and on point. The production value is certainly, quote, good enough compared to many other podcasts out there. But is there anything that can be done about Martin's nose whistling? No offense, but it's so distracting. Martin is a great host, but we need to put some Vaseline in his nose or something. So, no comments. Not so fabricated. That particular comment came uh, <clears throat> early on in, in the show series. And part of the reason for it was because the, the mic that he would record from literally was so sensitive it picked up everything. 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 So you could tell when Martin had a cold, like Which just is quite literally, or allergies, or allergies were acting up. So the nose whistle thing, it was it was hysterical. It hurt, but it was absolutely <laughs> hysterical. And then down here in the bottom left of the slide, there's a waveform. I tweeted this out years ago. That is me saying um. Ah, uh, oh, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I go through and edit those out. Martin doesn't, but I go through and I edit out ums. I I know my waveform. I know Martin's, and I know. Steve's Yvette, oh. Yvette's levels are always smaller, so I actually have to like, re-listen to all of those, as opposed to just going through and picking out all the ums uh, just from the straight... Uh, and, and the funny thing is, when Joseph posted this, I looked at it like, that's Joseph saying um. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how long we've been doing this. The other, one of the other big jobs is um, content creation, right? Um, unlike, perhaps, another Atlanta-based information security podcast, we actually plan our episodes out. We just don't like <laughs> pull stuff out of there. No offense, guys. Love you. Love you. That's right. Walk to that door. Get out. There you go. Loser. And the, the cool thing in Israel, you know, Google Docs and all four of us, we've learned how to work together and we know how to divide stuff up. So I, you know, some of this content here I wrote, but someone else is presenting it. Some of this stuff someone else wrote, I'm presenting it. Um, and it's really, I mean, a lot of the uh, episodes, you'll be hearing whoever's the most passionate about a topic is gonna be the person generally who's gonna speak about it the most. Uh, but if you also, if you've been listening lately, um, Joseph is sort of the facilitator uh, right now for the podcast, because he has the most pleasing equal voice, right? He's always the voice of sanity and reason. His voice sparkles. Just yeah. sparkles. So uh, the, the other thing you need is you need a social media web presence, right? Because um, if you're not on Twitter and you're not on the web, do you really exist? I'm you no. Know. Um, this can be very time consuming if you allow it. Um, what can also happen uh, while we replace Steve's microphone, um, is the, the social media presence can actually, if you can pick up retweets from other podcasters, and believe me, if you start a podcast, you throw something to the, to the podcast and ask for a retweet, by gosh, we're gonna do that, right? Because all of us, even though you know, we're, not, we're not competitors, right? I'm actually one of the biggest fans of the Defense of Security podcast. Love the guys, mostly. <laughs> so the other thing is, it, it's, a, it's a team chemistry thing. Um, People, well, okay. you, you, you got thoughts on this. Yeah, so uh, chemistry is a really big thing. And me joining the podcast, it was already pretty well established. And I have known Martin for years, um, probably... Close to 15 years. Yeah, yeah, easily 15 years. And so Martin and I, and we worked together. Um, you probably heard us say the airline a million times on the podcast. We worked together at the airline. We stayed in contact, um, but me coming to the podcast, I didn't know Steve and I didn't know Andy, the Waffle House guy. And, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I had met Joe maybe once at B-Sides DFW, I think. Mm, yeah. um, so chemistry was a little bit hard coming in because I didn't, you know, you don't know these people and you're talking to them on the phone and you're trying to do a podcast, but it's really, really important, um, but actually not all the time. Some of our most uh, downloaded and highest rated shows have been when there was conflict. And, um, you know, sometimes it was Martin versus Andy, or Martin versus Larry, uh, Larry Ponemon, or Martin versus Steve, or Martin, and if you can see the thing here, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's typically Martin versus somebody. So the common denominator seems to always be. Martin and with having the issue. Um, for the most part, we all get along. Uh, you know, I don't always see these guys. Steve and I were both at RSA a few weeks ago, and we didn't get to see each other all. Not which, once. Yeah, because RSA is yeah, so busy. 
or mm -hmm. we'll be at DEF CON together and we maybe can do like a five minute interview. Um, or or the last year I saw you like saw you in the hallway wave. Yeah, we, 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 yeah we literally wave. So, you know, <laughs> being able to have that chemistry and, and jump on the phone and or to Skype and instantly just kind of reconnect from where we left off is really, really key to what we do. Yeah. And the other thing you need to know about is there's there's gonna be in jokes that you have as a group, right? Um, <laughs> But you have to be aware of, and look, there have been a couple times we've lost sight of it, um, that people who are listening don't get the jokes. Uh, because they think they know you, they believe they have a relationship with you. They are inviting you into their car, into their house, to the space between their ears on a regular basis. right? So think, think about the radio shows that you listen to, or if you're a big, heavy podcast person. right? I have a huge crush on Terry Gross from Fresh Air. You're right, mad. right. I've been listening to her for years. Right, I feel like I know her. I don't. So, but occasionally, what you're going to encounter, and that has a fantastic story about how someone who, who's listening white knighted her. Yeah. 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 So. so, if you notice, uh, Martin typically introduces me as the lovely Yvette Johnson, right? Yes, she is. Yeah. So I get a DM on Twitter. Uh, I, couple of years ago, uh, and it says, I went back and found it today. Hi, Yvette. I noticed on the podcast that in the end segment, the, the host referred to you as the ever lovely Yvette, or something like that, as I recall. I'd be happy to DM the person talking and gently remind him that sort of comment could be off-putting to some female listeners or you, but I don't want to speak for you. However, I wouldn't want to take the to do that if you are not okay with the verbiage. In short, I'm happy to be the male voice making that statement, but I don't want to make you a party to that if you'd rather I didn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, like I said, Martin and I have known each other forever, and uh, there's no way I would ever be insulted by him saying the, lo the ever lovely Yvette Johnson. See, anybody that knows her knows that if she gets offended by something, she lets you know. When you come out of your, your coma, that will be the first sign that you've messed up. So the other, so, and so, I'm incredibly difficult to offend. I will probably offend you before you offend me. Uh, that so, is... Right? <laughs> challenge accepted. So the other, the other thing, this is something that, that Joseph and I um, did. <laughs> My wife was in the audience, oh, she good. tried to save us. She tried to save us. <laughs> So April Fool's Day came and Joseph was visiting the house and we thought, wouldn't it be funny if, because Zach and here from the Network Security Podcast, they they were saying, hey, we're going to pretend to fire them. Right? We'll say, hey, we can pretend to fire Joseph. We'll get to like, this fake Twitter war thing and we'll fire him and then we'll swap, right? It'll be so funny. It wasn't funny. My wife said, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And I'm like, ah, it'll be fine. We have a very you know, discerning and you know, illuminated audience. It wasn't fine. Um, we and as you can see, per the consent decree, we continue to apologize to Jackie Arlen of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and Dwayne Nigger of Austin, Texas. Um, we made two friends of ours cry because they seriously bought into that I had fired Joseph on the podcast. I want to be clear. They all thought that he was the one who had done something wrong. I got fired, but not for doing anything. No, just because I was a jerk. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> Worst, I mean, not you know, funny at all. Just, not funny. Yeah, don't. We don't. thought they would remember it was April Fool's. They did not. We also released it before April Fool's, which kind of made us <laughs> really, <laughs> really big things for us. Don't. Okay. So, you need to find an audience, right? And if you believe me, when, when Steve and Andy and I sat down and started doing this thing, we are like, who's going to actually come listen, right? We figured we'd peek out at 50, 60 listeners, probably, you know, our friends, co-workers, people who report us who felt, you know, at work, who felt obligated to listen to it, but that would be it. Boy, we were, we were wrong, so very wrong. And I'm convinced that if you are interested in doing a podcast and you build it, people will come. But there's something important to be said that the audience we were gunning for when we first started is not the audience we have today. And <clears throat> the audience we were looking for and the audience we had in the beginning is not the audience we have today. And while Martin breaks our presentation and tries to fix it, yeah, see what you get? That's why we don't trust you with technology. <clears throat> while while that, that's 
changed for us over the years. The, the interesting thing is, as the podcast has grown, we've taken a lot of direction from our audience. That's, you know, some of the stuff we talk about literally comes from suggestions. It's the best source of, of stuff that we can get. And <laughs> see, this is also why we keep our notes. Aha, now you know. <clears throat> And so one of the things we, we talked about initially, you know, again, the, the whole Paul Wacom thing, there, there was no way I could listen to Paul Wacom with my kids in the car, right? Nothing is Paul, right? It's just his podcast, use language that my kids were a little bit that didn't need to hear, right? Um, and and, and had, you know, Paul had conversations that I didn't really want to have to explain itchy to my kids. Just didn't want to do that. So we decided to be very family friendly. Um, it's harder for some people than others to do this. So here's a funny story. While we, we continue to look at the thing, you've got a flat desktop. You might be able to bring it up. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so earlier I said that we, when you hear us, we're live. Well, we have a family-friendly podcast, which means I can't talk like I normally talk. <laughs> but there are times when we're talking about a subject, and I get on a rant. And they've learned to just let me rant. Sometimes I can do it without throwing us into an R rating. Sometimes. But most times, they let me rant, and then I have to do the exact same thing again, only change all of my language, because, wow, once I go, I go. Yes, he does. <laughs> and it's funny, because there are times I'll stop myself mid-sentence, I'll catch it right then and there, and I'll have to start over, because I'm not allowed to say those things. And I would love to tell you what those things are, but I'm assuming you can guess. Because even now, I can't say them. I want to, but I can't say them. So one of the important things is you need to never, never think that your coworkers or bosses aren't listening. Well, they do. True story. Um, started work at my current gig uh, about four years ago. I was about three weeks into it, walking down the hallway toward the cube farm, and distinctly at 7.30 in the morning, I heard the strains of my daughter playing the song you just heard. That was interesting. So I began to hunt down and ask him, was anyone listening to a podcast? Everybody denied it. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out it was the, the partner from uh, our consulting company who was like, there's a new guy here. He says he's a podcaster. Let's listen to it. And that happened to be the episodes where we just totally trashed um, uh, consulting firms. So <laughs> that was awesome. And I have a story. So uh, when I was interviewing for my current gig, um, one of the questions they, and I've been there a uh, half day, one of the questions they asked me is, uh, where did I get my security news? And I said, oh, I actually do a podcast. And uh, one of the interviewers is in the audience today, and he said, what podcast do you do? And I said, uh, Southern Fried Security. And he said, you're, oh, you're that event, Johnson. <laughs> I listen to your podcast. I know who you are. And then he said, oh, so I guess that's, yeah, that question doesn't really apply to you because you do a podcast and I know you get all, I know where you get all your news and I listen to your podcast. So it was actually kind of flattering to uh, know that so many people uh, actually listen. And yes, then I got the job. So. It could be worse. You could get a text from a family member that just says, sparkles? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd say I'm sorry, but no. I was <laughs> Oh, go ahead. So the other thing you need to think about is who might be listening, but you really don't care. Vendors. Vendors, we don't care. I really don't care. Um, I speak what I believe to be truth, um, and I'm, I'm sort of known, and then this is being fairly candid and transparent, um, and Dark Martin occasionally comes out in meetings with vendors. That's okay, right? Um, now, the one thing we, we are careful about is if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you know that that's been in the consulting business in the past. We've never said for which consulting firm. We've talked about the airline. We've never said which airline. Um, Joseph works in, what are we calling it now? I work, I work for a, uh, a large manufacturing company. Right. I am the only cast member whose job is completely public and known. And we do that because it's not important. Yep. Okay, well, what's important is what I do, not who I do it for. And that's, that applies to us. Also, there are times that we may inadvertently say something that might embarrass our employer. And if we don't call them up by name, it makes the conversation with HR just a smidge easier. 
<laughs> yeah, smidge. Just a smidge. Just a smidge. So, pulling it all there. So, one sec. Sure. Go ahead. Going back to the, uh, we don't really care about the vendors. Some of you, if you're going to do a podcast, may at one point be sponsored. Okay? We're going to get there. Well, it's in our notes to go next to the next slide. I was like, wait a minute. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> just follow the notes. Just follow the Just follow the notes. Yeah. But anyway, if you are in a situation where you have to do a sponsored thing, then obviously the consideration for sponsors is a little different. But how you handle that, we're going to talk up next, because there's somebody who does a really great handle sponsorship, really great, and you should be aware of this person if you're not already. So, pulling it all together, right? One of the key things is your format. You need to be consistent, but you also need, need to be adaptable. Think about this. People want to hear new information, but if the format changes every week, that's exhausting, right? People, we, human beings like, we're, we're pattern seeking, right? And if you start radically changing every week, people will turn you off. There have been, po- there have been some really good security podcasts that have lasted seven, eight, ten episodes, but because they never found any sort of format groove, they went away. Um, so if you're interested in doing podcasts, even if you've discovered 10, 10 episodes and it's really not working, tweak it around the edges and then wait a while before you do a big shift. We've done three big shifts in nine years. And even then, on this last shift, we talked about it for two months before we did it. Yep. Um, so new, Joseph, Joseph uh, is going to rant for a moment. So, uh, prepare yourself. Right, yeah. So, new podcast, you get a pass on audio quality for a little bit. A little bit. Like, I don't know, 10, 20 episodes tops. Uh, Jack Daniels says five. Jack says five. <laughs> Jack says five. If Jack says five, the answer is five. Uh, the, the thing is, is like technical challenges can be frustrating, but we use Skype for recording. We do all the recording locally on one laptop, either Martin's or mine. Uh, we record, I use different tools than Martin does, but it just all gets recorded. We do all the editing on Audacity, which is free. Libsyn is fairly cheap. Uh, we host all our stuff for fairly cheap. Uh, but the most important thing, and this drives me up a lot, because there's so many good podcasts that you just can't listen to in a car, because levels, 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 right? We run everything right at the end through this horribly obsolete, hacked together Mac utility called Levelator that brings everybody even. And you get like five episodes to figure out, use Levelator or something else to bring everybody to even, uh, or, or, or don't bother. Yeah, I mean, one of the most uh, heartbreaking tweets ever I got was from Jack Daniel. How many of y'all know Jack? Okay. The sweetest, most wonderful guy in the world. But when he says, if you can't fix your level problems by the next episode, I'm going to stop listening, that is someone ripping your heart out and throwing it in the trash. And um, yeah, that's why it was, it was taking two hours to fix levels until I found level there. One of the things, if you're interested in doing a podcast, you can spend a stupid amount of money. This is a picture of the Defensive Security Studio, right? <laughs> or that's, 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 that's what I've been told. Um, you can spend stupid, stupid money. Thousand, literally thousands of dollars. Um, I think the total investment I have in my current recording year is under 300 bucks. And I built that up over the course of several years. If you're gonna invest in anything, invest in a good microphone. Um, that is that is the key thing. Is that is a decent microphone? I said Skype's free. Um, Libsyn, depending on how how much you want to uh, uh, stream out, Libsyn is probably the best content delivery network for podcasts. It's built by podcasters for podcasters. Uh, their rates are extremely reasonable. Go ahead and give them a look. If you're going to be hosting uh, your show notes, or you want the Libsyn can give you a pretty generic uh, website for your podcast. If you want to. Um, Go above and beyond that. Um, there's lots of inexpensive hosting options out there. I saw you two take notes. Um, the the headset that I use it's a Logitech G360. Um, any kind of gaming headset is actually really good when you're doing a straight connection desktop recording because they're designed for quick, easy communication. So that's what I use. And there are some really good podcasting microphones out there, but I have found over the years, because 
Lord knows I've ruined more more recordings with this group than I, I've, I've held. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about episode zero here in a minute. Um, the, the headset is always giving me the best results. Yeah. Dan Benjamin from uh, five, 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 I think. Anyway, he has a really good post about it. I'll put it in the show notes. I live in the game with like eight headsets. I, I, they don't work for me, so I've got a decent set of um, studio headphones and a decent microphone, and I actually brought them with me if you're really interested. I can show you the stuff I've got. It, it's relatively inexpensive um, and, and relatively easy to use. So, moving on. One of the things that every podcast has a challenge with is finding your voice, right? So when it was me, Steve, and Andy, it took us about nine months that we were getting into a groove. We could kind of anticipate when each one wanted to jump in because when you're talking to this guy, you can't see the other person. You don't, you don't get the body language that when they want to come in and talk. But we, we got to know each other long. And then we decided to bring Joseph on board. And that screwed everything up. Oh my God. <laughs> but here's the thing when we added Joseph, it took us about nine months to get to where we were comfortable finding our voice, just the three of us. And then we added Joe. It took us about five months when we were back on track again. And then we added Yvette, and it screwed everything <laughs> up. And that took us maybe three or four months, and we were back. See, despite what she says, she clicked almost immediately. We were like like a, a small family unit, they were. the yeah. first call. Because we were talking about topics we were all passionate about that one time. And it, we, we, we did. I, I can only explain it as less. We clicked. And from that moment forward, it's been like, you know, every time we, we get on the, get on the call, it's, it's like, Going back to like you know, hi Doc Boy, hi hi John Boy, like what, what's the the walnuts? It's like the, we're just you know that kind of kind of you're you're showing your age. Right. So <laughs> when they actually added me, uh, this is when I was traveling all the time. I was in consulting. I was traveling probably 150 nights a year. I was gone, so it was <laughs> who knew that it was always hard to because we we podcast at the same time, um, and so I would some I would be in various time zones. And I would be jumping into uh, conference rooms or yep. jumping on hotel Wi-Fi, trying to find quiet spots for us to podcast. And I remember thinking, my very first podcast, I was in Portland, Oregon, at, at a client site, and had to jump into a conference room to podcast because they were time zone wise ahead of me. And I thought, I have no idea what I'm doing. And I have no idea why these guys want me to be on this podcast. It was actually pretty perfect the way it worked out. But for the the meme that we have that she's always in an undisclosed location, <laughs> that's why. That's why she was on the road so much. We honestly, there were times we forgot where she was, so yeah. we just said we don't know, and it stuck all these years. And there's certain times, you know, for example, if you're a consultant and you, and you say, "Hey, I'm in Bentonville, Arkansas," right? Yeah. Which client are you visiting? Yeah. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons, again, about consulting. We don't want to give geographic clues. I mean, she was working for a, a large firm, right? And we don't want to get her in trouble. We don't want her clients to get concerned that they're being outed. Yeah. So that's I, I had lots of breach, uh, breach response clients, So, which Steve would salivate at every time. It I was would, cruel. Yeah. She would start talking about the things she's doing. I'm like, what? Because we would talk before. News. Yeah, we would talk before um, when we were preparing for each podcast. And you know, they would always say, where are you? What are you doing? What are you working on? And I would say, I'm in XYZ City, and I'm on a breach response client. And really? Steve would just go, oh Tell God, me more. Oh gosh, can we talk about it on the on, on the podcast? And I'd say, absolutely not. No. I will lose my job if if we talk about this. This is the part where the producer looks at Skype and says, "Hey, we're at 31 minutes." Yeah, yeah, we are 31 minutes. <laughs> so, and we're actually almost done. We're almost done. So, part of finding your voice is also your format, right? There's there is a voice that you have when you're doing. And, and I mean this, this is Jillian. The guys at Defensive Security, they do the, they do a, this news coverage, right? And they dive into the stories and have a great conversation. Like, that's a different voice than what we're doing right now. Where we're picking a topic and we're tearing that topic apart over two, three, four episodes, right? And really driving into actionable things you can do. Then you fit, look at someone like Pat Gray at Risky Business, who I think is probably one of the best security podcasters in the industry right now. Does a little bit of both, right? Um, and we'll talk more about Pat in a little bit. So but finding your voice and finding that format is really the important thing if you're wanting to do a security podcast. So let's talk about interviews, right? Uh, I, I personally, this is, I'm probably, 
I think the best episode we ever did was our interview with Larry Ponemon. Yep. Um, this was when the Ponemon Institute breach <laughs> report was first really becoming a thing. And for some reason, he did not vet who I was uh, and agreed, <laughs> agreed to do an interview. And as, um, you all know who Larry Ponemon put. So the Ponemon Institute you know, says, you know, all these are great numbers and a breach costs $218 a record. Right. And I was taking a statistics class at the time, <laughs> and I was going through their numbers and saying, well, you're doing stuff with like one or two significant digits, and you're putting all the numbers together, and you're coming out with nine significant digits at the end, and how does that work? And Larry realized that I had sort of like na finally nailed Jello to a wall. He got very angry. Oh, um, boy. He got very <laughs> very angry and actually after the interview they you know, reached out to some people about it. But what I really loved about that interview was I was mean. I was I was Atlanta nice. I was bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right? now, wait a minute, you've explained that phrase to me before, bless your heart. Um, so what I liked about it was it, it, it wasn't it wasn't um, about trying to prove him wrong. It was really trying to get him to explain, how did you get this number? I don't understand. It's magic, it's always magic. Right? But there's a challenge, and, and I think Joseph puts it best on how interviews can work, so. Yeah, the thing about it is, interviews are a tool, right? From a PR perspective, from marketing, that was the previous job I was in marketing, right? Interviews are a tool for you to get your message out. And that's fine from a podcast perspective, right? As long as you're aware that you're being a tool and uh, you don't let them be a tool, right? Like that's, that's really what it comes down to is that if you are going to do an interview, you need to come in with clear expectations and on both sides, right? Of, of both the interviewer and the interviewee, how much sales pitchy do you get to do uh, and so on. Right, and there, we've record, I've recorded, personally recorded interviews that never made it to air. Because the person had their talking points, it was sort of like watching a, a, a White House press briefing. No matter what you ask, we're going to come back to the, to the talking point and come back. And that's every that's not just, you know, every White House press briefing I've seen in my adult lifetime has been this way, right? Um, if, especially if it's not a sponsored interview, I I don't owe you airing that interview. So if you decide to be a big jerk about it, you know, delete, <laughs> and I don't have a problem with that. It's a little different when it's a sponsored interview. You have a lot less control, and we'll, we'll talk about them in a minute. But with interviews, there are some really great interviewers out there in podcasting. I think these are four of the best. We already talked about Terry Gross and Fresh Air. I think she is hands down the best long form interviewer in the world right now. Uh, if you haven't listened to her stuff, you need to do that, uh, especially her interview with Gene Simmons from Kiss. We're 27 minutes in, he walked out. Uh, it's an amazing interview. Um, Chris Hardwick used to do the Nerdist podcast. It's now been rebranded ID10T. It's a nerdy, techy podcast. And I think Chris does a really good job with long form interviews. They're generally an hour to an hour and a half long. They're relaxed, they're friendly, they're conversation, and they're fun to listen to. Uh, this is where I'm really going to geek out on you for a second. In our time with Melvin Bragg, uh, Lord Bragg, if you're nasty, um, BBC Radio 4 is um, the quintessential geeky, nerdy radio station in the UK. Uh, In Our Time is a show where Melvin Bragg sits down with three academians and you know, from King's College, Oxford, Cambridge, and they'll do a show on the proton. And they will spend 45 minutes talking about the proton. Um, and but he manages to draw out these fantastic details and bring the person back around to a point and really make sure the listeners are going to understand what they're talking about. I listen to his stuff, usually for the content, but also I'm listening to how he directs people to get them to say the thing needs to be said. And there's Ira Glass from This American Life. Have you all listened to This American Life? Mm -hmm. Please do. I cannot, there are word, no words for me to describe how good Ira is at using an interview to tell a story. It is phenomenal, okay? 
You'll notice none of these are infosec because I think it's really important. If you're going to, if you're going to be a podcaster, you need to listen to non infosec podcasts. You need to get out of the, the echo chamber and listen to how other people do things. So let's talk about sponsors. Um, we were sponsored once. We were sponsored once. For like three episodes. Never again. Never again. So the challenge is, and I'm not saying sponsors are bad, right? I'm not saying sponsorship is bad. Look at some of my risky business, right? Pat Gray. He's very clear about what portions of the podcast are sponsored, which portions aren't. He's very, very clear. And that's, we'll talk more about why that's so important to talk about. You have a relationship with the sponsor. You are selling a product. And if you're my listener and I'm sponsored, guess what? You are the product. Your ear holes are the product I am selling. So I think the, the, the sponsors are going to want some level of editorial control. They want to make sure their message that they're paying money for is going to go out there. They're going to want to put message placement in certain places, and they're going to be very forceful about it. Believe me, they're going to be very forceful about it. And there's also potential for sponsored interviews. Like we talked about earlier, you lose a lot of your flexibility in sponsored interviews. You just do. Because again, you're selling something. It's really important as a podcaster, if you're doing sponsors, to be very, very transparent. If you are opaque about sponsorship, you will get in trouble with your listeners, right? If, if all of a sudden we're talking about how much we love product X, right? A vet raves about it, just like, it's the best thing since sliced white bread. And Martin's like, everyone should buy product X. And then three months later, you find out we got, you know, jet skis from the people who make product X. You'd be pissed. And rightfully so. Actually, I'd like a jet ski. She doesn't need to do that. He doesn't want a jet ski. So I'd rather have cash, small, unmarked bills. But a pass that can get you in trouble with sponsors as well. Um, I have talked to people who have had podcasts and they sort of get a little um, uh, creative with describing their user base and their downloads. Remember, you? <laughs> Very creative. That's a good way to put it. Um, you know, so that the, you know, sponsors, they're, what they're looking for is for this many years, I'm going to pay this much money. If you only gave them a fraction of those years, they're pissed. It's like, you know, you go to the store, you think you bought, you know, five pounds of potatoes, you walk home, it's only three, but you paid for five, you're pissed. And rightfully so. Transparency and honesty, both with your listeners and your sponsors, is really important. We have found that the cost of doing our podcast we can absorb. We don't need sponsors, right? We feel that this, there, are, there are things we could have done with sponsor money, like going to more conferences, you know, subsidizing and that sort of stuff. But we feel that the uh, the structures and the complexity that sponsors bring isn't worth it to us. That's why, short of three episodes, we've never been sponsored. Now, the one thing that's that's come out since we did our podcast is Patreon. I think the Patreon model is extremely interesting. I, I, I uh, am a patron of several people through Patreon. Um, it may work for you, right? Um, Steve, you've got a couple of, of thoughts about Patreon. Patreon's amazing. <clears throat> but what you need to understand is, is when you set that up for yourself and your podcast, you've now put yourself in a position where you need to have to produce consistently. You have to produce quality, and you have to produce time because you have 30 days to get whatever the patrons pay. You've set up a subscription model, and people are going to buy into that. And if you don't give them what they want, then you're wasting your time and their money. So that's a thing you have to constantly stay up on. And let's, let's be honest, when you start up a podcast, you're gonna hit the roadblocks and writer's block or you know, uh, podcaster blocks where you don't know what to talk about, you don't know what to say, you don't know what you're doing. It's gonna get frustrating. Well, if you're under, if you're under the, um, <clears throat> uh, it, that, that's a note showing where we are at time. If, if you're under the gun because you've got Patreon hanging over your head, it's no longer going to be fun. If it's not fun, you're going to quit. You will rage quit podcasting. So use Patreon by all means. It is something good, but understand what you're getting into when you do. And I'm more than willing to bet the guys from Defensive Security who do Patreon would be glad to talk with you about how it's worked for them. Yep. Um, so please reach out to them if you have questions. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you volunteering for that. So, 
Suckers. Some closing thoughts. Um, we'll start at the far end of the table with the guy who keeps harassing us on time. That's right. Joseph, uh, thoughts? This is episode number 205. And honestly, it's ridiculous that we've been doing it for so long. It's fantastic. And finally getting to do like a live show in front of people has been fantastic. So thanks for having us. that Johnson had you words of wisdom for yes, us. Yes, so um, DEFCON 19 or 20, I think, we, we happen to all be at DEFCON together. We agreed to never speak with us. Except again. Andy. Uh, except for Wild except for Hamilton, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we were all at DEFCON there. And um, we had just all been at the, uh, at the um, DEFCON all day and ran up to Martin's room. We were all inspired and wanted to podcast, and Martin had a suite, and we had all the recording gear, and we had a couple people making cocktails. It was really amazing. So we go up to the suite, and we podcast, and we, I'm not kidding, we knocked, we had interviews, we knocked out this amazing podcast. So it was probably my, my most favorite podcast that we've ever done. And I left DEF CON early, a day early, and Martin was leaving that Sunday, and he came home and I said, are you putting that podcast? And we just did a DEF CON out. And he said, I lost it. And I swear, I said, no, 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 no. You didn't lose it. And he said, no, I did. Um, oh, God. Okay, so uh, for those of you who are interested in podcasting, when you're saving files, do not have a blood alcohol content of 0.06 or higher. <laughs> I remember somebody was making us cocktails that yeah, I would not that. call that go- that cough drop, gum drop monstrosity oh, yeah. in the cocktail. It was, actually, it was actually Nick Owen who was making our cocktail. Yeah. Right yes. Yeah, so, so, Steve, closing thoughts. Because I'm closing. glad time. Okay, closing, closing thoughts. Don't put cough drops in vodka. The other closing thought is this has been an amazing show. It's it's, it's really fun to record with these guys, but to do, do it live and actually, as we're talking, look out and see visual cues and feedback. Has, has been just amazing. So thanks for having us. This is this has been a lot of fun. So um, 200 some odd episodes. It's been fantastic. I'm hoping that this maybe inspired some of y'all to really think about. Hey, I've got things I want to say, uh, and maybe someone will listen to it. Uh, if you decide to to go ahead and do that thing, make that thing. But I I want to support new podcasters. Yes. So um, tell us so we can promote, and, and we'll help. Right. If you got questions. Reach out to us on the Twitters. We will we will work with you on that. So, on that note, you, we hope you have questions. We have answers, but again, uh, we make no warranties of trust or reply. Uh, regarding the energy usefulness or truthfulness of any answer, comment, or rant. And uh, how do you actually listen to the whole podcast at the very end these days? Um, some folks are really good at the front of the podcast saying that their opinions they express are, are theirs alone. We do that at the end. Again, it goes without saying, but we'll say it. The things we say up here uh, are for yeah, us. They don't reflect our employers uh, or anyone else. So with that, thank you very much. And are there questions, comments? We, we are security podcasters. Ask us anything. You said. Uh, when do you know when to quit? Like, <clears throat> oh, wow. So uh, <laughs> 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 So the question was, the question was, when do you know when to quit? When Joseph pings us on, on uh, Skype and says, 31 minutes. 31 minutes. That is your cue to stop. No, so, I, I think the actual question is, when do we know, like... When do you roll the podcast in? We have like, talked I want to about spin one up, but... Okay, so... I'm going to try and it can be this act of solidarity where I'm doing it regularly, but where is the point where, like, so, this is the um, I'm going to be really, really honest with y'all. Um, that's a question that we've been talking about. We've been doing this for a long time. Yep. And we, when we started this, we said, when it stops being fun, That's when we're start. not going to do it anymore. And, and for those of you who know, we've been sort of a hiatus. Um, we've got to figure out, is this fun anymore? Um, now, I'll be honest, this has been a fantastic thing. I'm actually feeling pretty recharged. I don't know about y'all. Yeah. Um, when it stops being fun, because it's not fun, I, I really believe the level of passion that you have about the topic is reflected in how you do the content, right? There are there are episodes that I've gone back and listened to where I realized I'm awful, and it's because I really didn't like what we were talking. That's why we quit doing breach a week. Yeah. 
I mean, there was, there was, a, there was an episode where there were like nine breaches that week, and we're like, I had asked, so we had started to prep the show, and I had asked Martin, and I was like, there's been nine this week, which one are we covering? And he looked at all of us and was like, no, nah, we're done with this. And it, that would, it's never happened again. We've never talked about a breach again. Um, to give you an example, so if you've listened to the show here recently, you notice we've had like a continuing theme in all the episodes. I'm going to let you know a secret. We recorded every single one of those episodes in one day. Yep. We have not recorded since we recorded those four episodes, and since we put them out weekly, bi-weekly? Weekly, bi-weekly. Bi-weekly. So it gives you an idea of the last time we were all on, on the line recording together. What we do is we plan out a, a theme, we record, you know, get the notes together for that theme, and then we sit there for like two hours and record all these episodes out. And then Martin and Joe edit them out, and that's how they get released. That makes it fun for us. But trying to come up with something to talk in week in and week out wasn't working. So that's when we moved to bi-weekly. And then after a while, that got stale. So then we moved into like, let's go for once a month at least. Then that got, you know, the holidays rolled around. We all got too busy and we just kind of stopped. And that's, so the long way around to answer your question is you stop when it's no longer fun for you. If you still have the energy to get out there and record, then you absolutely should. But when you're no longer, when it becomes a chore, stop. What else do I answer? Yes, sir. So, I've toyed, I'm not the greatest presenter, but I've spoke at conferences, and I've toyed with my team, we're a small consulting firm, about doing a podcast for forever. But it's one of those things where, um, how do you walk the fine line where the podcast should have its own identity and not just be marketing, yet, of course, if we're going to spend time on it, we do want people to think, wow, those, those people are really great, maybe... You know, we should ask them. So I'm going to speak to you not as a podcaster, but as a reporter. Let me answer that question for you. Read it's real simple. Question. Don't. Yeah, so the question was, he wants to, to create a, a podcast with his, his company, a small consultant. Group. How do you walk that line between having your own identity and actually selling and marketing? Here's the answer. Don't sell and market. You can talk about your consulting firm, and that's fine. But don't ever make the episode about what you can do or what you cannot do. If you're tackling a problem and you're just, just discussing the problem, don't make the solution about what you do. Make the solution about overcoming the challenge or overcoming the problem. Right. You see, when you dip in that you're in dog food and what it can do to help fix this situation, now you're selling to me. I don't want to hear that. But if you start talking about just neutral positions on how to solve this problem, everybody knows who you work for. They know where you're coming from. So if they want to know more and they reach out and contact you directly, well, there you go. Right. Yes. Okay. On the flip side of that, so you've had this podcast for a while. You have different personalities. You can, and, and you can also kind of have fun with it. People know, oh, you know, you go lax on one topic, but they know you're really passionate about another topic. Starting out with a podcast, how do you put the fun in the podcast but still stay on top okay so the question is how do you when you're starting a podcast how do you find the things that are fun okay so i very rarely almost never encourage people to do something okay episode zero of the southern pride security podcast can be found on archive.org okay i strongly suggest a couple stiff drinks sit down and it is awful it's terrible it's uh, it is <laughs> It is what we listen to when we want to humble ourselves. Yes. Because, <laughs> but from that to where we are now. Here. So, well, if you do a podcast, your first four or five episodes are going to suck. You need to be proud of it. Be honest, when we, when we put episode zero on the can, I'm actually pretty proud of it. In the moment, I was proud of it. Because we, we worked hard to overcome technical issues. <laughs> Skype sucked so hard back then. Oh, man. Um, and, and the thing is, uh, episode zero itself, we've actually we recorded three times before we finally got one we can use. And I had this horrible habit. Every time we go to record, because early on I used Linux, and I would need to update my laptop before I dialed in and got everything recording. Every time I'd update, uh, update my laptop, Skype would break or Audacity would break or something would break, and then I would delay the show. I was constantly the reason we, we, yes. we turned out so bad. But, but, but the thing is, you, I think if you're sitting down and you do the podcast with somebody, and I, I, I think what worked is Andy and I had known each other for a really long time before we started this. You know, Steve came in and he kind of brought something in and bringing in Jessica and Yvette, um, 
you bring in that those new ideas and you get that voice, you get that relationship, and the topics kind of flow. I mean, if you, if you think about some of the episodes we've done recently, they're not really infosec podcasts. You know, we've talked about how do you create relationships with other people? They're key, key soft skills, skills and yeah. things like that. And to to kind of layer into what he's he's telling you, uh, early on and even now, still, like when we we hash out episodes or ideas. There's usually something in that idea that one or more of us are passionate about. So when it comes to that section in the episode, like when it comes to communications, crisis communications, I'm the one that talks about that. Mm -hmm. That's my job. That's what I do. I know pretty much, you know, everything that's going to go wrong in an organization when they try to talk to the press about a breach or something. So I can address that stuff. So you stick to your strengths. And and we actually all know what we're passionate about. When yeah. we're uh, planning for the podcast. It's, I'll look at the show notes and they've already put my name to things because they just know me. Yep. They know what I'm yep. passionate about. They know where my strengths are. They know what I want to talk about. And uh, there's been times where maybe I'm not as vocal on the podcast and it's because I probably didn't like the topic. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so I've been a little bit quiet, but I've done some research and you know made sure that I could jump in at certain points. And then there's podcasts where I practically talked the entire time because yep. it was in my wheelhouse. It was something I loved. I was passionate about. I knew the content like the back of my hand, and they would let me go. Absolutely. Yeah. And it makes sense to lead with your strength. So when we talk about topics that she is absolutely king on, we won't say a word. We let her go because that's how we educate the public. That's how we get the message out. And I mean, you know, to, to just ride on that wave right there. There have been times where we've done whole episodes and I've just done, hi, it's great to see you. Things are okay up here in Indy, how are you? And I've stayed silent the entire time. And Martin and Andy or Martin and Joe go off on a tangent and that's the whole episode. Why? Because I had nothing of value to add. And that's perfectly okay. And if you want the first episode that they actually hit their stride, it's episode three. Yep. Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. That's on the lips and every cast doesn't have that.